Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Just Ask. Beloved family, our text says, You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. James 4, 2-3 I can't remember how many times I've done or taken something without asking, only to find trouble afterwards. And I've heard time and time again, you should have asked me for it. King David wanted someone that wasn't his. And he took back Sheba, the wife of his trusted soldier, Uriah, and then took matters into his own hands, causing his death to cover up his wrong. But just because some people have the power to take without permission, that doesn't make it right. The prophet Nathan told David a story about a rich man who had sheep and cattle. But when a visitor came, he took one ulam from his poor neighbor and prepared it for the visitor. When King David heard this, he burned with anger and said, As surely as the Lord lives, that man must die. Are you sure, David? This, in essence, was what was on the prophet Nathan's mind. He then said to David, You are that man. Then the Lord said something that blew me away. He said, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah, and if all this had been too little, I would have given you more. In other words, All you had to do was just ask. King Jesus says to us, You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Matthew 7, 9-11 All we have to do is just ask, but make sure to say please. Sometimes I get confused and come boldly to the throne of God, demanding this and that. How many of us would give anything to our children if they demanded? No please or thank you, just demands. Give me this, I want that, and now. Well, how is God our Father different? Don't you think He loves to hear please and thank you? For us to show appreciation and gratitude? God said to me, ask me first. And then write your ask, your dreams, and your visions out. Email it to yourself or someone you trust, but write it out. As our lesson says in James 4.2, we have not because we ask not. And when we ask, it's for our selfish pleasures. And Habakkuk 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. It is for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. Listen, the reason why some of our dreams and visions have not materialized is because we have not first asked and second, written it down. So it tarries. Don't stop dreaming and having visions. If you have no vision, you have no life. You will perish. Dream big, then ask God for big things. The reason why Moses built an altar when God did something was for remembrance. Your writing is for remembrance. Go back, read it, and remember how good God is. You confess your faith with your mouth, but when you write it, you begin an action plan of faith. Your faith and works begin to work together. Whenever we have an appointment, we write it down. Then we take the next steps to make sure we are ready for that appointed time. God says, when you write it down, I set an appointed time. Then I prepare a table for you to fulfill that appointment. 
It's like building an altar of your vision to God. God is a big God. Don't be afraid to ask him for big things. Just use it for his kingdom and not for selfish reasons. When you do this, he will use his resources for you. Jesus teaches us, I will speak to you plainly about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. John 16, 26 to 27. Did you hear that? Jesus says, I'm going back to the Father, and once I'm back, I don't have to ask on your behalf. You can ask yourself, because the Father loves you, and you love me, his Son. Now that's access. Remember, God is a good Father and wants to bless us, his children, with what we ask for, providing it will do us good and not harm. Just ask him. Much love.